Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we do want to get some data come in. Uh, years on M3 money supply came in. Um, hmm. I guess they haven't switched time around or something, but you can see here, my time says it would be an hour later, but they said they just they just came out with it. Here, the guy on the squat coming in at 11%. Um, We did get uh, German retail sales come in earlier, um, came in a little bit, somewhat stronger. They're looking at a negative 2%, came in at 1.9%. Unemployment, uh, minus 37,000. They're actually looking for a growth of 10,000. And... And we are looking at for uh, New Zealand dairy prices going to be out this morning. And then uh, we will have at 8.30 Eastern uh, Canadian producer prices. And then we will have ISM New York indexes at, at, uh, at 9.45 Eastern. I'm at 8.45. I'm in Central Time, so it's going to say 8.45. Be 9.45 Eastern, along with ISM manufacturing at 10 a.m. Eastern. And the composite index, ISM manufactured employment. We'll take a quick look just to see where things are at right now. Um, let's just go and bring this in here. Take a look where the euro's at right now. Hold up pretty well here. Um, you know, we saw that uh, down move last week, and then we saw this market open up against that 2284, that weekly level. And Still close positive, but close to the lower end. We're kind of pushing up higher. We do have those Georgia uh, Senate elections um, later today, depending on what part of the globe you're in. It would be maybe, at, you know, probably at night. But uh, that's going to be a big mover, potentially a big mover for the dollar. So you definitely want to pay attention to that. Uh, let's take a look at cable. We'll go down the list real quick. Cable peering back just a little bit here at uh, 3566 onto the Aussie dollar. Uh, looking pretty good here on the Aussie dollar. Same thing here. We sold off a little bit yesterday, but look, here we are pressing back up again. Uh, then take a look here at the Kiwi. Uh, pretty good strength here in the Kiwi. So definitely seeing these pop up. Uh, Dolly N saw a nice little <clears throat> hammer yesterday, but we're certainly back under pressure here. And then through the dollar CAD, which we saw a nice turnaround here. Uh, just a little bit of weakness to start. And then, of course, dollar peso right here at uh, 1995. Now we did see the indices going to pair back. We're going to take a quick look at those before we hit the news. You can see here with uh, the NASDAQ, we came off. Remember yesterday I was showing y'all that up in here at 12,960, we had the 161%. And I actually got short right up in here. I didn't hang on long. Uh, I was looking for a dip down to the 12.902 where we had the uh, same day VWAP. And then we did hit that and went a little bit lower, popped up. And then we did rotate lower. I did catch a little bit more on the downside and then uh, stepped in here to come in long right there and do a little ad in here. Didn't stay in it for too, too long because I had to do the uh, daily roundup webinar. You can see here that uh, <clears throat> the market has rallied right to the, the VWAP off of the highs for yesterday. So you can see where they've kind of run out of gas here. Um, obviously those Georgia Lex is gonna have an impact. The thought being that uh, <clears throat> if for some, uh, some way the uh, Democrats sweep both uh, seats, we're expected to see the dollar sell off, um, rates start to move higher, which would then be, is gonna be considered um, bearish for the indices at least initially. So you can see here, we. Took a pretty good drop yesterday. We've come back a little bit, but uh, certainly one thing we want to keep an eye on is we did break that trend line here and broke it rather decisively here. Oh, this is, I had these arrows. This is what I did the uh, the uh, Fibonacci 161% here. So I'd use the most recent, the most significant high and low. And you can see right where the market ran out of gas. And uh, 
peer back in a little bit. There we go. And it came in actually the cost of the number coming right. There we go, move this here. There we go, right there. Came in at uh, 960. Right there, you see it's right there. 960, uh, I had 960, the market topped out at uh, 959. And depending on how, I guess it hit it right there, pretty much right there on the, on the noggin. And you can see where we came off on that. I'm uh, gonna go and clear these things out. But you can see how we decisively broke that trend line. Look how long they've been going against this trend line. Look at that. And we broke it pretty good yesterday. Uh, any moves back towards this 12,753 is going to have a tough time, especially if they, they try and rally him back up. Now, if the Democrats do win, we'll see. The thought is going to be that we're going to be under some pressure because rates are going to jump up. We'll see how it all manifests itself. Um, also taking a look here at Bitcoin. Holding up pretty well here. I mean, this has really held up very, very well. We're looking at, we were looking, but when we came in, uh, I had this move down here. Uh, didn't know it was gonna make it all the way down here, but uh, we talked about that, uh, that move down here, the 50%. That actually happened before we even did the move, but we had that, uh, that was a pretty good little move down there. And boy, what a heck of a bounce did we we get off of that also. We'll see how this whole thing goes and plays out. We are tracking now Bitcoin on an intraday basis, as well as Ethereum. I guess you always get the name wrong, but Ethereum. I did see where, I think Didier picked up some uh, Ethereum. I think he said at 989. Uh, but we can go in and take a look at that uh, also. Um, let's see here. There it is on the 30 minute chart, but we'll go and take a little bit further look with that. Well, let's go on and um, take a look at the stories out for the day. Once again, I think today's going to be, I really wouldn't be looking for anything big to happen today until we get into those Senate races. So I think the market is going to kind of keep itself in check. Uh, Australian and New Zealand dollars rise on firm recovery prospects. The Australian and New Zealand dollars rose against the greenback on Tuesday. Climb back the previous day's losses as markets bet on a quick economic recovery in 2021 once coronavirus vaccinations are widely distributed. The Aussie dollar was 42 basis points higher at 7697 in thin trading volumes, having held on to the 77 cents over the last two sessions, a barrier not cleared since April 2018. The Kiwi is 45 basis higher at 72.04. However, both the Kiwi and the Aussie liquid proxies for risk have been buoyed by rising commodity prices and the country's success in containing the coronavirus pandemic, though an outbreak in Sydney is threatening to grow into the new year. There's still a degree of uncertainty as we enter the year, a degree of hope for a degree of uncertainty, said ComSec economist. James said uh, Australia's uh, broad success in managing the pandemic would likely support a rapid economic and market recovery and push the Aussie dollar towards 78 cents. We think uh, we can get into go into the 2021 prospects are very positive and the Aussie dollar will be back in favor in a year which will be much more about growth here in the Australia and globally. And let's go and see what the dollar's doing. And the dollar gets respite as the virus surge. Georgia runoffs curb risk sentiment. The dollar found support as concerns about surging COVID-19 cases and uncertainty about the U.S. and runoff elections in Georgia and fuel demand for safer assets. The greenback held gains from overnight in early Asian trading on Tuesday after U.S. stocks retreated from record highs at the start of the new year. St uh, the British pound was under pressure as Prime Minister Boris Johnson ordered a nationwide lockdown to try and sh uh, uh, slow a fast-spreading coronavirus variant. The dollar index was flat at 89.86. The dollar will continue to trade with the general risk sentiment, said uh, Shinichiro Kadoda, 
senior strategist at Barclays. The dollar has also seen some buying amid increased COVID cases and ahead of the U.S. Senate elections, he said, but ultimately general positive risk sentiment should continue this year. And with that, the dollar continues to weaken against riskier currencies. The fate of the U.S. president Joe Biden's agenda, including rewriting, rewriting the tax code, boosting stimulus and infrastructure spending, hinges firmly on Tuesday's twin Senate races in the battleground state of Georgia that will determine control of the chamber. Safe Haven Japanese yen was little changed at 13, uh, 0313 per dollar as it advanced uh, to 271 on Monday, the strongest level since March as Japs, Japan's prime minister said the government is considering a state of emergency for Tokyo amid a surge in coronavirus cases. So with that, we're going to go on and uh, move into the analysis. See. As I mentioned, I think we're going to be relatively quiet um, until this evening. So I wouldn't be expecting any big moves. With that, we'll go and take a look here at the euro. So the euro saw an initial rally that faded late in the New York session. You saw that rally. Resistance remains at the weekly level of 2284. We've mentioned that before. A stretch could send the pair to 2349. Support will be 2154. So the only difference is we're going to change the here is it's 2154. Now don't forget if the the Democrats take both seats in Senate. Uh, that that runoff in Georgia, then we could see the dollar come under pressure. We might go and spike up to this 2349. We'll pull that up on the weekly level just to show you. And there's the 2349. I think we could pop up there. We might even take that out, but here's that key weekly level. The 2284 has been keeping the market in check. Uh, but we could go in and pop up to the 2349. We might even go a little bit above it, but we'll see how this goes and plays out. But we'll have to see. I don't think you're going to see any big moves until we get uh, into the results from the election. Uh, let's go on and move into cable. Also looking at the weekly here. So cable came off slightly short of the, uh, the short of tagging the bias chart resistance, which was 3709, which we had here. Actually, looks like it did tag it um, on Monday before pairing back sub 36. Resistance for Tuesday will be 3664 with support at 3495. So 3664, 3495. And because of that, um, the volatility we've seen there and these movements, we have spread this uh, range a little bit. Let's go move into the Aussie dollar. Also take a look at it on the weekly. So the Aussie closed slightly lower on Monday after challenging last week's high. Support on Tuesday will be 76.20, followed by 75.98. Resistance will be 77.43. So support, as I mentioned, is going to be 76.20. And resistance at 77.43. Onto the Kiwi. So 
So the Kiwi closed slightly lower on Monday, forming a near tweezer top. And we'll take a look at the daily in reference to that potential tweezer top here. So once again, the Kiwi closed lower on Monday, forming a near tweezer top between these two. Resistance on Tuesday will be 72.40 with support at 71.15. So we'll keep that one pip off, 72.40 on the upside. He's still bullish. And with that, we'll move on to the dollar cad. So the dollar cad rebounded on Monday, you can see there, uh, after going to new lows for the move and closing above the prior day's high. You can see that right there. Resistance for Tuesday will be 28.50 with support at 27.20. Like I said, I think we're going to be we're going to be stuck in narrow ranges until we get past that Georgia election really has an impact because if the, if the Democrats take both seats, you're going to see this dollar come under some pressure, at least that's the expectation. Let's go and move into the dollar peso. So the dollar peso posted a modest stand by weary bulls on Monday, closing above the prior two days sessions. You can see right here, got that close. Resistance on Tuesday will be 2003 with support at 1978. Obviously still bearish. And we'll go and move into the dollar yen. So the dollar yen posted a hammer on Monday. Resistance for Tuesday will be 352 uh, with support at 293. Obviously, we're pressing lower. Uh, <clears throat> the yen is gaining strength with that. Those now it looks like they'll be putting in a lockdown here in Japan. Kind of crazy. Lockdowns all over the place. So we had a 293. It's pressing beyond that. Uh, you can see this prior low here, right there. That's going to be 286. Now we're below that, but we'll go with the 286. Previously, we had 252. Um, we're below. We'll see whether or not we can stay beyond that. And our resistance now is going to be, you can see here, this close right there. And you can see these this wick here. So at this point now, it's going to be 333, which we had yesterday. And we'll move on to the dollar index. So the dollar index posted a minor bottom after posting new lows for the move. Resistance on Monday will be, well, that was for Monday, but 9020 was supported at 89.52. For some reason, it didn't update it, but that uh, low down here, right here, the 89.49.44. Here's the problem is that if we do get the, if for some reason they sweep, the dollar is going to come under some pressure. And I'm really concerned because I think that if the dollar does come under pressure, we are really going to go in and, and knock some things off. Uh, so let's go and take a look here. <clears throat> if we do, if they do take the seat, I think we'll be challenging the 89 area. So I don't think we're going to move big, but just to be on the safe side, we're going to let's go with, um, you know, don't want to try and forecast. It's just that. This is not going to hold at all if the Democrats take both Senate seats. We're going to be pressing against 89 even. So I'm just going to go with 89. Well, we actually did have 89 12. Fantastic. And on the upside, I'll keep the 90.33. So that, that's fine. I want to stay with that. Let's go and go into the Kiwi Yen. And you can see this thing continues to motor on. 
Uh, yesterday we had highs of 74.68. We're going to keep that 74.68, and the low is going to be 73.20. The difference is, you see what this this body is, and this wick. Those two, that's going to be support now. 73.53. And go to the euro pound. Well, we did go in and rebound here. It looked like we we're going to be pressing much lower as, as we closed out last week, really under some pressure. But we popped back, and you can see here's the resistance right here. We actually just tagged it. 90.56. So we've got that level. That'll be resistance. We're just coming off that by 10 pips. And support, you can see these wicks coming across the bottom. That's going to be support, 89.81. On to the euro odd. Same thing here. Look like we're going to press lower. We haven't, although right now we are coming under a little bit of pressure here. After, look here, we saw a nice... Um, move higher yesterday, but we'll turn around and given all that right back. You see the majority of that. So yesterday's low was going to be support, which is going to be 58, 57. And resistance is going to be right there. That whip from the prior day, which is 59.79. So just a little bit lower than what we had yesterday. On to the Euro Kiwi. Well, we got a little bit of a gain and we know this is a key, key area. And look, not only did we engulf it on the downside, we're actually pressing here against this level here. Support's gonna be these two lower wicks right there. Right there, 69.64. And resistance is going to be yesterday's body close. Right there, Japan sees record cases in on Tuesday. So, mm. and let's go on and move on to the guppy. <clears throat> we did have resistance yesterday at 4177. The high was only at 29, but we've look at this. We finished weaker yesterday and we're still pressing lower. Obviously, the, the Japanese yen is gaining strength with this whole coronavirus news. I would have thought the opposite, but you can see these wicks coming across here. You see that? That is gonna be support. So it's gonna be 39.29. And resistance, this lower wick right here, which it's not even close to, yes, to today's. We finished on the weaker side, but it's gonna be 40.34. And on to the starting odd to wrap things up with the bias chart. Here we are pressing again lower. And the odd is strengthening and the cable or sterling is weakening. It's going to be this body open right there, which is 75.42. With resistance, it's right here, the body open right there. This body open and that wick we'll go there. So 76, 71. So probably going to see some decent volatility, obviously, with FX um, as we start the new year. Because as I mentioned, one way or the other, uh, if it's not the the pandemic that's causing a lot of issues, um, then it's going to be the Senate raise, which could see the dollar really come under some increased pressure, which would also go on and press pressure indices. Let's move this out of the way. You can see here indices are relatively quiet right now. 
Uh, we did want to come into the European session and challenge right here, the 12645 area. They took a dip down there. They held it, they came off of that. Uh, taking a look with Bitcoin right now. We did go on and come back to this 23% here. Uh, this low here is not correct right now. But if you look at it, had a pretty good phenomenal run here in Bitcoin. I saw Didier says he's looking um, at his own Bitcoin chart, what he's looking at. Um, my thoughts are if, and it certainly doesn't look like it, if we were to break lower, uh, but it doesn't look like it. And really, if the dollar comes under pressure, that's really going to open the door for Bitcoin to go higher. But it is holding up so well on these dips. I mean, you think we'd get a little bit of a pullback. But if we were to get flushed back here and pull back, it'd be a great buy if we could take this dip lower. For right now, I mean, we're holding up. Every time we make a dip, they come in and they buy it aggressively. It doesn't even spend much time down there. If you took a look on these um, shorter term charts, like look at that. They take that dip sub 30 and they quickly buy it right back up. We're kind of hanging here, at least for right now, they got to get above this oh, 31,500 31, in the short haul. Um, take a look on the two hour chart. He is right there on the two hour close, essentially. 31,776, and that's what they need to get above to try and push it. You can see here that um, pull this back, we're just below that trend line. So they really do need to get above that 31,776 to really juice some momentum higher. Uh, we'll take a look at the overall equities. To get a look, Apple came down here to challenge at 129. They closed just above it right here. But if you take a look at Google, it's sitting on that trend line. And there are some other other pairs or other equities that certain, seem to be a little bit concerning. Facebook, they challenged at 267. They came off, but we are into some very close areas where it's going to make things questionable. One of the things that has helped equities overall, they've actually benefited from that, has been the uh, BKX. And let's go and take a look at that. Look how we're standing right there on that BKX. And we've had a phenomenal run. Look at that. Since September, look at this move. So we've moved it all the way back up here to 98. Market is paired back. And we're just sitting on two key levels right there at 96 and at this trend line. Um, if we do see the Democrats take both houses uh, and the dollar comes into pressure, we see spi a rate spike, you could see this come under some trouble, uh, some pressure. We shall see. Um, Tesla continues to be at a new high. PayPal's a little bit lower. But once again, I would keep an eye. It's usually not the the first move that you have to worry about, it's the second move. And that's what we'll be looking at. One of the things we had talked about, and I thought it would made the index, uh, the NASDAQ so vulnerable yesterday was because we talked about has the NASDAQ had gone higher, the key FANG stocks really hadn't made any. I mean, Apple was up in here, but if you look at the other pairs or Microsoft, they were still well within the ranges. They weren't at all-time highs. Look, look at Amazon. All-time high was at 35.52 and we were down here at 31.86. Google was doing a little bit better, but look how NVIDIA had stayed weak. And look at how much trouble that uh, Facebook has been. So if you look across the board, other than some of the uh, pandemic plays like Peloton and PayPal and eBay, those have done very well. But Overall, the bigger major players had just been kind of in there a little bit firmer, but certainly not anywhere close to all-time highs with the exception of Apple. Um, so it really may open the door for us potentially to go lower. You want to keep an eye on these because if they do start to break lower, uh, then we will see that further follow through. And when you take a look at NASDAQ, although we did have a pretty good pullback, we'll, we'll flip back to that.
you'll see we, we could come back a long, long ways. Look at this move. You see that? We're just in the infancy of a move. So this market could easily pull back down just for starters to 12, uh, 332, which would still be, uh, that's right here, get a little bit of reaction right there. But the real stepping in here would come in right around here, which would be 12,237. So you'd still be looking at about 450 handles lower before you start to see some demand come in, a little bit of demand. And generally you, you see a little bit of an overshoot, take it probably closer to 12,112. So you'd be looking at something closer to 500 handles before they, you start to see people start to step in and you know, a little bit of short recovery, maybe a little bit of a value buying. So we've, you know, like I said, we've come a long way and we're still in the infancy of this move. So we'll have to see how things play out, but uh, uh, certainly if the Democrats do win both those seats, then you are gonna see expectations are that the dollar's gonna come under some pressure. That may obviously be uh, also um, uh, advantageous for Bitcoin, but we shall see. With that, we'll call today and we'll see you in the chat room and thanks for joining us here on the European cross webinar. Oh, uh, Mark says, can you take a look at gold? Okay, I uh, really don't pay much attention to gold that much, but let's we'll take a look at gold. Bear with me. Here's gold. Uh, we're looking on the daily. It needs to get above right there. You can see all the touches coming across 1960. Here's the deal. If the Democrats do win that and take those seats, the dollar comes under pressure. We are going to see a pop in this thing. And where you'd be looking for them to run out of gas or maybe not run out of gas, the challenge area would be we could, if the dollar comes under pressure, challenge the 2000, which would be 2018. Your initial resistance is right here but they would easily clip through that. <clears throat> so you probably see right there, 1991, and potentially a move up here to 2017. The, if the dollar comes under pressure, I can't believe that anyone's going to step in and try and defend it. They may try and defend it after a few days, but if that happens, I think we're going to see the dollar really come under some pressure. And yeah, you could go and see gold spike up and probably see Bitcoin probably take off too. Uh, but there we go, and uh, thanks for going, joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar, and we'll see you in the chat room.